Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Rogers looks for reaction at County after PSG hammering. Goncalves says hearts are fitter and ready to go. Rooney all set for Old Trafford return. Yeah, just a few of the headlines we'll be discussing as we look ahead to a weekend of football across all four divisions in Scotland and in the Premier League in England. Delighted that on this Friday, Alan Ruff is joined by our bookroom guest, as ever, Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, back page headlines first of all from Friday morning. And the Daily Record, explain yourself. This is, of course, uh, Neil Doncaster going to have to explain uh, the letter, which some feel is a misrepresentation of all the uh, SPFL clubs with regards to Rangers' EBT case. Um, Brendan Rogers with a warning there, don't close paradise, uh, an appeal really to UEFA on the back of the fan coming uh, onto the field of play against Paris Saint-Germain and swinging a kick. Uh, towards Kylian Mbappe. Uh, the Sun, uh, we don't deserve a kicking again, going back over that story. And uh, no respect, uh, Lee Wallace just having, uh, basically lashing out at one of the pundits he feel has shown Pedro Cachina uh, a lack of respect. And the Daily Mail, well, as you can see, I think it's been a long wait for uh, Cologne to get back into European football, but I think they're uh, due a hefty fine because of the conduct of their fans in the Europa League match um, because it, it looked as if it was at one point going to be abandoned. Uh, it eventually got underway uh, and Arsenal went on to win the match. Um, but we'll discuss that a little later on in the programme. Uh, let's cut to the chase. Uh, there's lots of stories we want to try and get through. Uh, Hugh McDonald, what do you make of the, the Neil Doncaster situation? Well, I certainly think there needs to be some clarity on, you know, what precise process uh, uh, was was undertaken for this letter to be sent. What is the purpose behind it, the letter? I, I think that the, the, the moment this whole battle, and it is a battle between the SPFL and, and, and the SFA, the actual grounds of the battles need to be a bit clarified for somebody who's maybe as thick as me because at every twist and turn, it's like watching watching Twin Peaks for people of a certain yeah. age. Just when you think you've got the actual plot line and you've got what's happening, suddenly it veers off again. Yeah, well, I, I mean, again, <clears throat> I, I'm in your camp <clears throat> on this, you know, because of where this thing is going, but um, there seems to be two separate issues. <clears throat> I think the one burning issue here is quite simply, uh, like the SPFL, if the SFA followed protocol. Yeah. That I mean, that is the crux of the matter here. The other part of it is I almost a totally. sideshow. I agree totally. I think people are getting admired in EBTs, and then people are getting really admired in things like title stripping, points off, old club, new club, whatever. For me, for me, I'd be happy with an investigation into the SFA without any you know, without any sort of punitive action being taken against any member club, just looking at what happened? What did they do at the time? Because I honestly think the more and more I read about this, and as a professional journalist, you've got to read about it, the more and more I read about it, there's absolutely... There's blunt and huge and crude questions about the whole governance of Scottish football through that time. And by the way, I'm sympathetic to the SFA and that what was then the SPL. This was a huge story thing. This was the liquidation of Rangers. It wasn't mm. like somebody going into administration and you could take 10 points off them or a transfer ban or whatever. This was a club that had to go and look for a, a place to play, to get a licence. So it was a huge, unprecedented crisis that they faced. But, and you know, to cut to chase in many ways, I think they faced that crisis by putting their underpants on their head two pencils up their nose and running about daft because some of the language at the time, and we know it now, Armageddon, civil unrest, end of Scottish football. I mean, come on. And I think that infected a lot of decision making at the time. Yeah, OK. Um, that story, uh, no surprise, uh, has been running for a long, long time and will run and run. Um, OK, uh, two issues on the part. There's a full card of football. We'll reflect on uh, Partick Thistle against Rangers on tomorrow's programme on STV2 at 2 o'clock, four hours, where we bring you all the latest news from football. If there's a goal anywhere, we've got reporters at key games. Hopefully you can join us for that. Um, but uh, one of the lines that came out of the build-up to 
to uh, Party Thistle Rangers was um, Lee Wallace. Uh, just basically, I think having a, a swipe that uh, one particular pundit um, maybe mm -hmm. showed uh, a lack of respect towards Pedro Cachina, um and he seems to get more flack than Brendan Rodgers. I don't want to get into an argument over oh. pundits who work yeah, for yeah. shows because I think that's a stupid argument to go down. Everybody's got an opinion, they're entitled to it, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, if Brendan Rodgers starts losing games and starts talking nonsense, I think he'll get the same short shrift mm -hmm. from pundits who try and be as objective as they possibly but can. I think we have been objective, uh, particularly after the, the game in, during the week there. You know, I think we all weren't, weren't happy that there was a centre-half not bought. You know, we'd, a lot of us didn't agree with his, his opinion towards the striker uh, and things like that. So he hasn't really been getting away with it. I, I just find the, the Lee Wallace thing a bit late in the day. You know, why not respond to it after it rather than a wee while? You yeah. know, it's, it's sort of old news. It looks again as if he's been put up to a press conference and somebody's feeding him, you know, to get that out of the road. Yeah. You I, know, I, or bring it, bring it to the attention of, yeah. of people. I don't, I don't see what the relevance is of, of bringing it up. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's quite, uh, for me, when, when you're looking at, you know, newspaper headlines mm. or going to a press conference and analysing somebody's mm. words now, I, I quickly skip over, we're right behind the manager. Nah. I don't care who it is, because, <laughs> you know, they were oh, right behind Mark Warburton, uh, but in the background, the, they were not uh, right behind Mark Warburton. It's like, it's like the old Eric Morecambe line, the, the, the crowd were uh, right behind me. He said, but I managed to shake them off at the station. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 players have got, I mean, it's like, it's like the other thing, they're right behind the manager and then two days later the caretaker manager comes in, you know, and he says, I think he should get the job. Yeah. You know, after 40 hours, yeah. they and say, oh, I think he's, you know, John Daly's the man for the job, says yeah. 15 Hearts players. And then, and then the follow-up <laughs> usually <laughs> is, we let the manager <laughs> down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a rule here. It's interesting, this one, in that I think, I mean, I think it's, it, it's daft because I would just ignore it. I think to take Pedro Cachina up into that hornet's nest on that day wasn't clever because it gave, uh, and let's be honest, let's be frank about it, it gave Chris Sutton a target. Yeah. You know, the guy's standing there. And that, he shouldn't have been put in that situation. Uh, he shouldn't, when he's, uh, when that situation's passed, he shouldn't, I don't think Rangers as a club shouldn't be addressing this because it gives it credence. I mean, it's now headlines again. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the broadcaster and the pundit in question are devastated by that being a back page story today? Well, no, I would but, suggest uh, not. No, absolutely not. But uh, again, it, it takes you into a situation where the program, which primarily con concentrates on football and mm. opinion on football, starts to veer off into the legitimacy of other pundits mm. and, and other television mm. or radio programs, mm. which I think uh, you know is a, is a stupid situation to get ourselves involved in. Um, let's switch then to the other man who uh, did get it in the neck in midweek, mm. which was Brendan Rodgers. His side got a hiding, mm. um, and now he's looking for them uh, to, to try and, uh, first of all, um, bounce back against uh, Ross County. You're always preparing for the next game. You know, that's what it is in football. You know, you have a disappointment, but very quickly you're on to your next game. So for us, Ross County will be a difficult game, um, different challenge for us. And uh, But we'll go into it with the same ideas to, to look to win the game. Um, and like I say, it's still very early on in the, the season, but uh, but we've started the league campaign very well and we want it to continue. We'll assess Dedrick over the next 24 hours. Whether well, he's going to be available or not, but um, but yeah, now Musa looks good. He's been training now for for a few weeks, so, uh, so yeah, he'll be in the squad. So Musa Dembele <coughs> back, another old face back there. Uh, Colo Turi's come back as technical assistant mm. to Celtic. Is that a bonus for him? I think it is. He's. I mean, I don't know what he's like as a as a coach. Although I've heard good things, but what I've heard really good things about is his um, all pervasive influence in the dressing room, particularly with the younger players. I know he's close to, for example, I know he's very close to Moussa Dumbelli and has kept, you know, I don't think Moussa Dumbelli is a kid that needs to be, you know, kept away from the bright lights, but he's kept on focused, you know, with all that um, huge speculation that surrounds uh, Dumbelli. So I know that Dumbelli looks at him as a mentor. I think you only have to look at celebrations in the Celtic dressing room after matches, after uh, winning the treble, to see the way that they were singing even the Colo Turi, Yaya Turi song, and he was joining in. So I think he's a great influence in the dressing room. 
a coach. Yep, I don't think there's a downside to it. Yeah, uh, one other little line, and from the back pages there, I think um, Brendan Rodgers has echoed the sentiments of all of us from Tuesday night. If Celtic keep up these misdemeanours, they could face mm -hmm. a behind closed doors game or indeed a section of the stand shut down. Yeah, I think he's trying to get it through to mm. the, the supporters that this is the stage that we're at. You know, I, I do feel sorry for Celtic that it's one person, mm. you know, that's, that's spoiling this whole thing. And you would like to think that the powers that be will look at the instance and, uh, and see that uh, it was out with. Well, I think it was out with a Celtic's control. I, I, I put it down to the security who are in charge and employed to stop that thing from happening. That, that's why they're there. They should be doing their, their, their job better. But it would be an absolute it'd be a tragedy if there was nobody at the game against Bayern. I mean, you think of all the people who have done nothing whatsoever wrong and they're the ones that are going to be punished. Yep, OK. Um, I thought Ruffy was going to bleat on there for another minute and a half. We'll see if he can talk longer after the break. <laughs> I might be doing you a disservice, Hugh, but I, I reckon if those five rings hadn't appeared there, you might have had a stab elsewhere, or were you yeah, on the mark? I was getting there, thereabouts, but I was yeah. pretty, once it was Los Angeles, because I remember, I, I remember Olympics, you know, vividly, because yeah. I, I used to, in, in those days, I wasn't a sports writer, I was on the, the, the what they call the backbencher papers, and Los Angeles was one of those ones that was iffy time-wise, so you were getting a lot of big stories coming in at one and two in the morning, so I remember where and how I was in 1984. Yeah, um, no point in asking yourself, Ruffy, because there's a great Glasgow word uh, that you had written all over your face. It was just a glacial look. <laughs> well, as if to think. I, I, I was going to go for 86, but you were so adamant it was 84, I just no. kept my mouth shut. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the picture there of Eric Black, he was a fantastic player, Eric Black. Mm. I just, uh, you, you're kind of a gutted sometimes when somebody picks up an injury that curtails their career. Oh, absolutely outstanding player, Eric Black. I mean, for the, the old cliche about hanging in the air. I mean, for a guy who was what, maybe five nine, five ten, uh, not tall, not huge, but what a great player in the air. Technically very good, and that back injury just curtailed his career. But he's had a very long and interesting career as a as a, as a coach. You know, working with huge names. Yeah. Um, it's a long CV. You're absolutely uh, right. I mean, he's been able to get in there and, and, and earn the respect. Mm. Not that I'm saying or questioning whether he deserves it or not, but he's had a lot of people who have really, you well, know... Nowadays, thought, nowadays, Peter, see the, the people he's working as well, as if he's not deserving it, they'd be out. You know, he's working with people who don't really mm -hmm. know him. You know, I've but, done, and he's obviously and, been recommended. But, yeah, but the other thing about it is when he's with somebody and he gets sacked, it's another manager and that's manager takes him on. So obviously, they, they, they know what he's doing behind the know. scenes. Yep. Yeah, uh, and of course, his old club, Aberdeen, are in action against Kilmarnock. Uh, no surprise that they're trying to get Kenny McLean on a longer deal here. Just uh, the amount of clubs that are trying to protect themselves before, you know, somebody comes calling. Yeah, and one of the things that's interesting in, 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 in football, there seems to be a trend now um, for players wanting to run their contracts down. And it's one that I can... <laughs> Entirely understand because if you, for example, if Sanchez leaves, you know, this summer, Arsenal get 50, 60, 80, 90, you name it, money. If he leaves next year, he gets nothing. So, you know, Arsenal get a hand. So, you've got to presume that the Sanchez is getting a, a right good signing on fee more than maybe Ruffy was offering people at Glen Afton. It's very, uh, it's very difficult to run down an eight-year contract. <laughs> you know, it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the, the classic thing in the old days, of course, was you could run down a contract because no, the contract... You had an option. You, they had the, the club had an option just to hold your registration. And that's a huge one, because see further down the line, it's maybe a, a, a subject for another show. I think at one time, see footballers get smart and they're getting that way, there'll be no transfer fees in the future, none at all. The players will just run down their contracts mm. and just take, they'll take the money to leave Liverpool and go to Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's, I think there are more than a few smart players out there that are doing that at the moment. Um, I mean, 
Kilmarnock, I mean, Barry Ferguson was on the show yesterday, Ruffy, mentioning that uh, the likes of Neil McCann and Lee McCulloch need a bit of time. Um, but, you know, mm. only Ian Maxwell of Partick Thistle last week says you can't give managers an unlimited amount of time. Kelly need Aberdeen like mm. a hole in the head. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, uh, as we are sitting mm. here, I think everybody uh, will be thinking this is the banker of the day, mm. you know, and uh, I'm sure Lee McCulloch will have to come up with some special plans, you know, to get something out of that game because I think Aberdeen are beginning to pick up uh, momentum. The, most of their players are beginning to, their new players are beginning to settle in. So I think it's going to be a long, long day for them tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, here's uh, Derek McInnes, the Aberdeen boss on the opposition. Man, if I'm right in saying, I've had probably the biggest turnaround in players. Um, I think Lee has probably made the most signings and, and the most went out. So I think with that, there comes uh, you know, that extra responsibility from everybody to try and find that understanding. So uh, that may well be a factor. But when you actually look at the squad, they've got some good players. Um, uh, I think last year under Lee, they picked up some very good results on the road. Um and uh, I think they'll be confident enough coming here, but I think their their home form uh, has it's been for a few years, not just in the least time that their home form has maybe not been as good as it can, it can be. Yep, uh, they face a Kelly side who haven't won a game yet, have only scored three goals. And uh, as far as Pataudry's concerned, uh, the Dons unbeaten uh, this season. And Ryan Christie, the on loan Celtic player, says they're hoping to make uh, Pataudry a fortress this season. I think we've we've done well to to make our home ground um, a bit of a fortress and teams you know I don't think any team in the league would say they, they enjoy coming here um, which is good but again like you said it, uh, that puts the pressure on us we have to um, you know kind of rise up to that um, and make sure that you know no teams coming coming here um, and hopefully picking up any points um, I think over the the course of the season no matter who we're playing in the league um, if we're playing them at Bataudry, um you know we think we should be winning the game. Um, which, like I said, is another big pressure to put on ourselves, but I think it's a good pressure to have. Yep, there's a lot of positives around Pataudry at the moment. Ruffy, just one line from the papers. Uh, I think a lot of people backing uh, Derek McInnes's assessment that Joe Lewis is the, the best goalkeeper mm -hmm. in the country at the moment. I kind of look at that and think, is that a suggestion? I, I mm -hmm. try and flip it on its head and say, is that a suggestion that maybe Craig Gordon's dropped off mm -hmm. a bit? No, I don't think so. I just, I just think that uh, in the games that we saw this year, I think uh, the boy Lewis has improved. He had a great season last year. I think Craig this year has probably had one or two wee bad goals that he's lost, you know, and I'm sure if he's, he is honest, he certainly could have done better in a couple of games. So I think that the boy Lewis hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, and I think Craig's maybe had a couple of couple here there but uh, both of them are still top class keepers yeah um, now uh, Hibs against Motherwell this is an intriguing one there was a great line this morning from the Motherwell uh, manager saying that uh, he checks uh, players social media mm -hmm. uh, before signing them mm -hmm. <laughs> which which is uh, I was just wondering Ruffy you'd be okay you'd have been mm -hmm. signed up no problem yeah because I don't play with it you know I don't know how to do it so uh, yeah. and uh, yeah I think it's an interesting one because mm -hmm. we've saw a lot of players in, uh, in, in recent years uh, making a wee bit of fool of themselves on social media. So I mean, I don't know what he's, what kind of stuff we'd be mm. checking into and what what people are saying. Mm. Whether that would put you off. I mean, if you found it on message Twitter, would that mm. put you off signing them? Or Ronaldo, or would you just say, "Oh no, I'm not having you" because your Twitter mm. is getting a bit out of order? Yeah, I think that's taking it uh, <laughs> slightly above, <laughs> slightly, <laughs> slightly <laughs> above <laughs> Motherwell's <laughs> pay band. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, Ruffy, yeah, um, I think Motherwell will be quite tolerant of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo's, Ronaldo's Twitter account. <laughs> it, it shows <laughs> also slightly. It shows Mr. The Burrows, <laughs> the chief executive, would be saying, "Little Steve, just leave him." Blue head. I think Lionel will be all right. Yeah, it'll be okay. The, the funny thing is, it shows that the Motherwell supporters group have suddenly got an yeah. influx. Of Cash, um, but nevertheless, they they, they face a, a hip side who don't have a good record against Mother Lang. They've only won one of the last ten. Now, it's a great match, isn't it? It's really intriguing because Mother will have come into a bit of form recently, a bit of confidence. Hibs, the way, um, uh, a terrible result at home at Hall. I mean, just an awful result for, for Neil there, but otherwise, more than decent. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I think it's a really good game, and I think both teams are front foot teams as well. Yeah. And two, uh, I mean Murray has and Mole, uh, one on either side. 
have been really impressive this year. Mole, after having a sticky start to the season because of his personal circumstances, will he go or wouldn't he go? He was really knuckled down well and, and, and go by to But I think this is a smashing game tomorrow. Yep, here's Motherwell boss Stephen Robinson. Is there big, big club, you know, Lenny's done brilliant with them and it's a, it's a game if you're in football you really look forward to, so it's it's a nice stadium, but, you know, big crowd will be there as well, so if you don't look forward to that you, you shouldn't be in football, but it's a tough game for us we're, we're well aware of that, you know, they're a well organised, good team, play, get the ball on the ground and play as well, so it'll be a, it'll be a tough game for us they won the last three games in a row, mm -hmm. uh, Ruffy. I think well, uh, some yeah. people are reassessing mm -hmm. uh, who they're going to tip for the playoff or relegation yeah, I, I don't want to like, pick bones in them, but... I, I you're going to, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think they've been quite fortunate in a couple of games. You know, I think that some of the teams that they played, you know, have taken their chances, could have possibly taken something out of the game. But they've won their games and they'll go there with confidence. But I, I just think that uh, Hibs will be too strong. Yeah, mm. I, I'm a kind of a glass half full on this, mm. Hugh. Uh, there are times when luck goes against you, but if you're winning games, and I think that's all that matters, yes, just win the game. Uh, I, you know, who cares if it comes off a pigeon and goes into the net? And there's, there's no asterisk around that, isn't it? It's going to, I mean, and you know, going back to earlier story about uh, Kashinya and, and the, the, the scrutiny he's under. The scrutiny he's under has reduced in the last couple of weeks. Why? Because he won a really important game at Ross County and he won a really important game last week. That's why things shrink. There's no, especially uh, in Rangers Celtic debates, but yeah, winning's everything. I thought, um, I think Motherwell have got some really decent players on that team. I think they've recruited well. I thought they had a a smashing transfer window, and that they, you know, they made a bit of money, and and they kept the players that they wanted to keep, and they added to the squad. So I, I don't see them down. Yeah, I don't see them down the bottom two. No. Yeah, are they going four games in a row against Hibs? Or is no, I think Hibs one tomorrow. Yeah, Ruffy. Oh, I don't even bother. <laughs> don't even know why I bothered there. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm questioning his impartiality, okay. but are you going for Hibs? Yes. Yeah, oh, there's okay, a shocker, and there's a shocker. Okay. Um, join us in 23 weeks when uh, Ruffy will go against Hibs at a home game. Um, we're going to talk about Hearts next. If we talk about players and some of their uh, comments in press conferences, oh, how things can change when one manager leaves mm -hmm. and another one comes in, we'll hear from Isma Goncalves uh, on his thoughts on Craig Levine. And there's a slight reference to what had gone before. OK, that's all to look forward to coming up. And, of course, in this programme, we'll be speaking to our man down south who focuses on the Premier League, Ian McGarry. Uh, join us after this a quick break. Tell you, hey, would you see the smile on Ruffy's face after mm. nailing that one? Well done, Ruffy. How do you feel about that? Uh, it was Jack Sparrow. Is that what it done? Jack Sparrow. <laughs> what? None of the football questions are <coughs> Jack Sparrow done it for me. Well, the first you. one, I wasn't too happy with the other ones after mm. that, but that was a good one. Okay, um, who'd have thought? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, anyway, how are you faring on these uh, quiz questions? One more to go in the next part. We'll be talking about the Premier League and that. We're talking now uh, about. Um, Hamilton Ackies against Hart of Midlothian. Um, I, I mean, I dare not call this one because Ackies surprise everyone, but Craig Levine is making an impact on Hearts after a good draw against the Dons. Very much so, and it was a very Craig Levine draw as well. I mean, you could, you could <coughs> automatically see the changes in the team, the way it was set up. The way they were going about their business, they're very defensively, very solid, very quick going forward, not not frightened to hit the ball long to the, the big guys up front. We talked earlier on in the programme about the observation that Joe Lewis may be the best goalkeeper in Scotland at the moment. And he certainly franked that theory. He had, he had a couple of really good saves and, and, and one absolute topper of a save. Uh, and that, that really was, that was, you know, I think Hearts, well, Hearts did deserve to win that game. So it's an interesting day tomorrow. If you're asking me how to go about it tomorrow, I think 
Yeah, I think um, I think Hearts will be the better team tomorrow. Yeah, um, of course, Isma Goncalves has been talking about uh, the squad under Levine now uh, seems to be fitter uh, than last uh, manager. Look, it's been uh, a different weeks with Levine. We've been working more uh, physically, and uh, and from Thursday and Friday we work uh, tactically. So, but it's been different. And it's good because I think we needed to work more uh, physically, you know. So, yeah, yeah, all the players have said it that we are working more. So, because uh, I think we we were not uh, fit enough. So, we work on that now. Well, there's your condemnation right there, Ruffy. Yeah, like I hate players doing that. You know, I really do. You what? Know, that, what? Uh, Even if it's the fact. Well, well, is it a fact? Oh, he's just told you well, that most of the his, players. That's have, his opinion. Nobody said most of the players yeah, have said that. Behalf. Let me hear the other players. I'd, 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 I hate that when a coach is in there. And everybody, we, we knew what Cathro was like. I never had anybody complaining then. Never had anybody coming out and saying, "Oh, we're, we're not fit enough." You know, I think that's just him personally who's coming out there. Well, with you all know, due respect, Ruffy, if somebody says that we're not fit enough, they're out. <laughs> as yeah, simple as that. Right. If you yeah, have yeah. a go at the manager, Hugh, you're yeah. out. No, I mean, but that, that is the... That is... What we, we, we alluded to this earlier on the programme. When the manager's there, we're all behind him. When he goes, the caretaker should get the job. When the new manager comes in, the old manager was rotten. It, 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 it's, a, it's a theme that sort of yeah. certain players were. I, I tend to agree with a certain extent. I love people coming out and doing that because yeah. that's my job. Yes. Right? Yeah. But I always think I'm a great man for personal responsibility. You know, see yeah. if a player's sitting there and going, I wasn't fit, but they'll. Wait a minute, you're a professional football player. Did you decide? Did you raise that with the manager? That would be my first question in the press conference. Did you raise that with the manager that you weren't fit? And did you ever think of maybe coming back in the afternoon and working on your fitness? Uh, I mean, I'm all with you with just let them come out and do it. I mean, that's what sells sells newspapers. But th there's questions to be asked uh, about, you know, attitudes under Cathro, no doubt about it. And some of that, by the way, is Cathro's fault as well, because it's, it's incumbent on the, the manager to, you know, to put his ethos on the team. I can't remember, for example, many players will be coming out under Rodgers or others in Scotland and saying, oh, we weren't fit enough, because they know they'll get hunted. Imagine somebody saying that about Walter Smith. Well, 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 let's not have short memories here. There were a number of players in the background saying the exact same thing about Ronnie Dyla's training. Oh, aye. And, and Tony Wilbury's as well. Yeah. Uh, and came out, but they weren't saying it at the time. I mean, he never got into a press conference and said, you know what, I'm coming back in the afternoons now because I need to tone up a bit. Uh, and funnily enough, the dialogue one was strange because, was, if you can remember at the time, the culture was that what dialogue was all about mm -hmm. was making players fitter through diet, exercise, yeah. stretching, etc. Yeah. Uh, that was that was that was a strange one. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time the players haven't agreed with the training. You know, mm -hmm. one minute his training is too hard, you know, and they're complaining about that, and then mm -hmm. we're no training enough, and then we're no fit. You know, I think I agree with you. It's up to the individual. If you think you're not getting the best out of the training, then you go to the manager and you say, look, I want to do a wee bit mm -hmm. extra. Yeah. Or in your day, if the training's too hard, you just get a taxi and bypass the players as they're on that long run and then catch up at the end. Yes, but when you're told to come in on Sunday, you come in on Sunday as well, you know, for the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I know what, I just get the players, you know, maybe it was maybe it was just the fact he wasn't playing well. Mm. You know, yeah. did, did we look no, at he, many he, games he, that he's... He, he, wasn't, he wasn't the only one, Ruffy. There were a no, number of players well, who actually well, have highlighted this well, in the just, last couple well, why, of weeks. But why don't they accept, right, we weren't playing well? Mm. Why do they always have to come out and, and insinuate it's somebody else's fault but not theirs? Yeah, well... It's well, a human well, trait, though, isn't it? Absolutely. You, you've ever uh, listen, Ruffy, <coughs> we all know it was their fault. We don't mm. need to be told it. We can, you can see it on the park. I mean, we, we, when we get adverse criticism on this show, you're out the door, Peter and I are saying, it's rough, Ruffy. He's obviously having seen the wee tape under the table here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, uh, now that you've said your piece, is it yeah. Hamilton or Hearts for you? A draw. Oh. 
You think it's going to be a drop? Yeah. OK. Um, um, apologies to anyone who uh, picked up in my uh, raised voice there, as if to say, <laughs> are you for real? <laughs> um, Dundee against St John's, another manager who's just trying to get it right uh, and trying to get... Uh, a result from anywhere is, of course, uh, Neil McCann. It's Dundee against St Johnston. A uh, wee bit of needle in this from mm. days gone by, uh, decades gone oh, by. Man. Still a bit of needle with mm. them. Yeah, and, and a really big game uh, uh, tomorrow for Neil McCann. Um, they, they, they seem to, according to highlights and what I've watched on the telly, seem to do OK. I was for quite a long while and then, the, the, and then lost three late goals. Uh, um, missed a couple of easy chances that won nothing. So uh, they're coming in off a back of kind of sword, a dispiriting defeat. Mm. But I really think they've got to get something out of this game tomorrow to, to kick start their career. And it's a... It's a team you just don't want to be played against to do it. Yeah, uh, Dundee have lost 13 of the last 17 matches. Um... They're on that bottom three and Neil McCann, the manager, says he's not worried about the league position right now. Yeah, I was asked the question, was I concerned about where, where I was within the, the table? And I'm not concerned, I'm not happy about it. Of course, I don't like being down there. I'm trying to change things within the club where we're not enjoying and we don't we don't ever want to feel comfortable in that area uh, of the table. So, But that's going to take time. Yep, um, and uh, I think you'll be given that time to try and get things right there at Dens Park. Who's winning it, Hugh? St. Johnson. Uh, I just think they're, I mean, we just underplay them all the time. And just, uh, I think just think Dundee's defence is not yet strong enough uh, to withstand St. Johnson and O'Halla in, in, in fine form as well. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that because you wouldn't bet against them scoring again, Robbie. No, but I'm going to think they're going to get a wee Robbie the Green. Uh, tomorrow and yeah. just and just win it by the odd goal. But I know what Hugh's saying. St Johnson are a difficult team away from home, but uh, no, I think Dundee will get this one. Yeah, OK. Uh, let's have a look at the fixtures for the Premiership in Scotland just to see how it all pans out. We will reflect on Partick Thistle Rangers on tomorrow's programme. Aberdeen against Kilmarnock, Celtic against Ross County, Dundee against St Johnston, Hamilton against Hearts and Hibernian against Motherwell. That's how it looks in the Premiership. Um, and of course, into the Championship, our game of the day that we will have our reporter at is Falkirk against Dundee United, uh, Hugh. Another great... The Championship... The, what's made the Championship such a really intriguing league this year is... The, over the last few seasons, you've had standout teams in it, Hibs, Rangers, Hearts. This season, there's not a team that's miles ahead of anybody else in terms of budget, etc. So I think it's going to be a hugely intriguing league. And, and Falkirk, Falkirk now have got to step up tomorrow and say, right, we're getting back into this. We're going to be the Falkirk of the last couple of seasons. This is our year. We've been there and thereabouts. We've been unlucky in playoffs, but we're going to have to seize it this year, and it's going to be very difficult for them. Yeah, here's Dundee United manager Ray McKinnon's thoughts on the game. I think Falkirk have been brilliant over the last couple of years. They've failed narrowly, uh, narrowly for promotion a couple of times, and uh, you know, um, you know, again they'll be fighting out this year as well, like everybody else. But you're right. On paper, you're probably looking looking at these two clubs playing in a, in a top league. We're not, so we have to earn that right to get back there, and uh, it's not easy. Um, but you know, we'll give everything we've got. Yeah, it's not easy for Dundee United either, um, mm -hmm. Ruffy, because well, they're the early favourites at the start before a ball was kicked. They're finding yeah. it tough. Yeah, they certainly are, and they're finding it tough because there's other teams out there who we never thought would be up there are up there and playing well. Uh, but as we get back to Falkirk, Falkirk are the team I'd picked uh, to do well, but again, uh, losing a late goal against Brecon last week, pressure's on, mm -hmm. you know, the pressure's really on. If they were to lose this one tomorrow, you would then start looking at the league table, obviously, if others win, that's a big, big gap mm -hmm. to close. Yeah, briefly, who's winning? A, a draw for me. Uh, a draw, a draw is a, draw is a score. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, just, <laughs> okay, just mm. change. Many hells, you. I'll take Dundee United. I think there's been criticism of Ray McKinnon, you know, not playing expansive football, but that's like going out and buying a, a, a you know, buying a, a family car, not you know, complaining about his lack of acceleration. This is what he does. This is what his his whole career has been built on organising teams. And I think once Scott McDonald hits the ground running, he'll get goals. And I, I see them at the top end of the table. OK, uh, join us after the break. We'll be looking at all the other fixtures in Scotland.
I never got it on Cliff Richard, but mm. uh, Clive Earp's goal in the mm. 95 final uh, gave it away. Uh, it would be a long time before Ajax win the Champions League. <laughs> well, that's the that's the, the the you know one of the nice wee quirks that were uh, put up the other day. There was that um, when Celtic and Fiona both uh, industrially pumped. <laughs> the other night, they they played their ex finalists in the in the European Cup. Uh, great names of of past football are just are, are going to fall by the wayside. Um, uh, it's just it's just straight money. You'll remember. I don't know if you, remember, but Rafi will remember that point. You know, if a Scottish team has drawn a French team in Europe, it was never. It was a shrug of the shoulders, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. At one time, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't have yeah. been, been shot to be playing a, a French team. I'd be amazed, you know, if anyone came out of left field apart from the superpowers now in Can't. the Champions League. I mean, yeah. I mean, even a Stour Bucharest is just a no-no now. No, because they've not got time to build up the team. It's like that. <coughs> Could you imagine if, say if Monaco had kept all their players from last year and Bappies mm. and the rest themselves and that, had kept all their players, maybe added to them in the transfer window, you'd say... They might be a not bad shoot for the same because they got to go to mm. They sold six players. Yeah. There's, small teams can't build up because the money the, the money's there for the for to go to the bigger franchise. I call them franchises now. Yeah, well I can't argue with you. Um let's look at the fixtures in the championship after hearing from Ray McKinnon, our reporter will be there at Falkirk against Dundee United. Dumbarton against Brecon, Dunfermline, mm. St Mirren's another cracker, Inverness against Livingston and Queen of the South against Morton. Um, there'll be sparks in that one. Here's League One uh, at East End Park, but uh, here's League One, Airdrie against East Fife, Albion Rovers, Stranra, Air United against Alloa, Forfar Athletic against Arbroath and Queen's Park at home to Wraith Rovers. And League Two, Anna Athletic against Stenhouse Muir, Berwick Rangers against Elgin, Clyde take on Edinburgh City, Cowden Beath Peterhead and Montrose against Stirling Albion. So, uh, the Premier League fixtures, there they are. Um, of course, Bournemouth Brighton tonight, but Crystal Palace, Southampton, the early kickoff tomorrow, Huddersfield, Leicester, Liverpool, Burnley, Newcastle, Stoke, Watford, Man City, West Brom, West Ham, Tottenham, Swansea, Chelsea, Arsenal, Manchester United against Everton. It's got to be Friday. It's got to be time to speak to uh, our man down south, Ian McGarry. And of course, just looking at all those fixtures, Ian, uh, there is, of course, the headliner. Then there's the sentimental match. And then there's the intriguing one. What about the headline match, first of all, uh, which is Chelsea against Arsenal? It's been a very bad run. I mean, Arsenal... Peter, we've talked about lots of times on the football show with regards to the lack of uh, performance, the lack of effect that they've had on Premier League campaigns in recent times. But um, they've begun a, a Chelsea team who are absolutely on the up after that you know, freak defeat against Burnley in the first game of the season. They've recorded wins since then. They had a, a, a very, let's just say, gentle passage into the Champions League in midweek against Carabag. Um, interestingly, um, Zappa Costa and uh, uh, Bakayoko both scored um, their first goals for the club. I don't think Arsene Wenger will be relishing the prospect of that meeting at lunchtime on Sunday. Uh, he's got problems of his own, obviously. They had a crazy night in the Europa League. I'm sure everyone saw it. The Cologne fans behaving, you know, it was bizarre. It's, if English fans had done that anywhere in, in, in Europe, um, I think the, the results and the press and the outcry would be huge. But instead, it's almost English people are weird. They're apologetic. It's like, yeah, it was bad, but, you know, let's just make the best of it. So um, I think it'll be a strange one, not a strange one in terms of um, form, but a strange one in terms of a London derby like Chelsea versus Arsenal is normally um, difficult to predict and very, very uh, hotly contested. But I can't see anything but a Chelsea win and a comfortable win at that. OK, let's uh, appeal to your sentiment then. Wayne Rooney, back at Old Trafford, Everton on the back of a hiding from Atalanta, uh, and it's Manchester United the hosts. Well, not just uh, a hiding at Atalanta, Peter, but a hiding uh, at home to Tottenham last weekend. And um, Rooney infamously once you know, bared his... Manchester United top to say once a blue, always a blue. 
Um, we'll see on Sunday if that's really the case, if Wayne really turns up. His off-field problems are well documented. We know that um, Everton themselves are in a crisis of confidence. Ronald Koeman's press conference today was almost incredible. He said, you know, it's time to make a mark in the sand. I need to talk to the players and instill in them that we need to change our mental attitude, we need to change our way that we play in terms of the high pressing. He was incredibly, he, well, he wasn't critical of any particular player, but critical of his team and actually of himself as well, which is fair enough. Because at £127 million spend in the last transfer window, that's more than ever ever spent in one particular window. They need to produce results. And losing consecutive matches, 3-0, 3-0, um, Europa League and Premier League, is not good enough. Going to Old Trafford, they could basically not ask for a harder test. United are league leaders, albeit on goal difference at the moment. But um, one little thread of hope uh, that they have is the injury to Paul Pogba. He will not play uh, at Old Trafford on Sunday. Uh, the hamstring injury will be um, keep him out for at least four to six weeks. And he has been instrumental and by far the most influential player so far uh, through four match days of the Premier League. And the most intriguing one of the weekend, who'd have thought it's Marco Silva against Pep Guardiola, Watford, Man City? I agree with you, Peter. I think this is, I think for me, it's the, probably the, the biggest contest of the weekend in the Premier League. Um, you wouldn't have bet on that being the case before the season started. <laughs> but Marco Silva has produced, uh, you know, well, let's, 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 let's make a comparison with Frank de Boer at Crystal Palace. They both started the jobs at the same time. They both were given a charge of changing the philosophy of the club that they went into. You'd have to say that Watford probably had less basic assets in terms of talented players than Crystal Palace had. And yet De Boer's now out of a job and Marco Silva is fourth in the Premier League. Watford, fourth. I mean, come on, at any time of the season, that's going to be an amazing start. Yeah. They entertain Manchester City, the biggest spenders in the transfer window. Um, City will come very much on a high, having had a very, again, a bit like... Uh, 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 the ascent into the Champions League in, in midweek, very gentle introduction uh, against Feyenoord they won easily etc etc but going to Watford against a team where they will come up against uh, very well organised, they will be tactically prepared for all of Manchester City's attacking midfielders, they will be able to uh, high press them they will not allow them time on the ball and Marco Silva specialises in defending well against the better more talented teams. Now, if anyone's looking for a coupon buster on Saturday, I would say do not bet Manchester City to win, even if you're, you're tempted to. I'd say have a wee punt, have a couple of quid on Watford to win that game. You'll get good odds and you'll get good value for it. Oh, you know, you painted it so brilliantly there, Ian. I've got to ask you then, are you putting a couple of quid on Watford to I win? certainly am, Peter. <laughs> Absolutely. I, would, listen, I do think this is one of the matches of the season where you look at it and think, you know what? Those odds don't actually accurately um, represent the way the teams have been playing. And Manchester have got overwhelming favourites. And look, I'm here to get the custard pies next week. Don't worry <laughs> if it doesn't turn out the way I say. But I think Watford will push them very, very hard. Yeah, and you can bet we will give Ian, uh, you know, the baseball bat <laughs> next weekend if uh, it, it goes astray. Um, it's unusual for a wish old man to say he's going to put money on Watford. Uh, yeah, the Watford story is very interesting because it goes against all the grain. You know, everybody always says, oh, there's no stability here. We've had five managers in six years and six managers in four years. Watford basically changed their manager every year and they've stayed in the, in, 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 uh, the Premier League. And what they do is that they just believe in the philosophy of getting the right man in. They think their infrastructure is right. They've got the money to pick up players, and they just want the coach to be the coach. They don't want him to be a manager. Yeah, um, some intriguing games over the weekend. But one little uh, footnote to it all is Gareth Barry will equal Ryan Giggs' appearance record of 632 games. It test I mean, you couldn't compare him, <coughs> Ruffy, but testimony to his fitness approach. Mm -hmm. He's a regular, steady Eddie for a number of high-profile teams. Yeah, he certainly is, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's why these clubs, uh, <coughs> when they go into the market, he's the kind of player <coughs> that every club should have. You know, he just gets on, mm -hmm. he can play in, a, in numerous positions, he just goes in there, and he scores uh, some spectacular goals as well mm -hmm. into the bargain. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest with you, as we look ahead to tomorrow, Ruffy, it's highly unlikely that Hugh will get a regular, consistent 632 appearance 
appearances for us because we never know whether he's with us or mm. not. I mean, we're just hoping he's going to turn up tomorrow. I'm just, I, I'm just hoping I wake up tomorrow <laughs> at my age and never might turn, turn up so we into the afternoon. Let's get in the morning past. Yeah. There, is, there is no better line to finish with. Uh, fingers crossed tomorrow we'll have uh, Hugh here with us if he gets up in the morning. Uh, Ruffy will be here and of course uh, Gordon Smith as well. We always like uh, um, the funny man, the straight man and the stooge. You can work out which one is which. Uh, join us STV2 2, 2 o'clock tomorrow we'll take you right through all four divisions in Scotland keep you up to date with the Premier League in England and we'll have reporters at key games across the country if you can't get to Scottish football we advise you to go out and see a match but if not stick with us on STV2 and uh, we'll take you over the four hours of Saturday afternoon good night